Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 15 of the July Legal Dairy Challenge, halfway through. Uh, so, you know, you're doing good, you're doing well. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's prom, valid triangle number. Uh, so, I'm actually in uh, SF for a little bit, um, just hang out with family and friends. Um, yeah, so I don't know what that means, but eh. anyway, just in case you're wondering. Uh, but today's problem is valid triangle number. So, okay, give a number, the number of triplets chosen with them, trying to reset them to silent. So, okay. Mm. So, yeah, so. So, this should be straightforward. Mm. It's a little bit awkward. There's a, little, a couple of edge cases, but it should be straightforward in terms of understanding. Um, an n square where n is a thousand should be fast enough, even if it's a little bit awkward. Um, let's see. Oops, what did I do? Um, but yeah, I think the 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 fact that the duplicate ones are a little bit awkward, but but maybe that's okay. Of course. So we call that. Um, I guess it's n square log n hmm. by searching because it's sign names of a triangle. Yeah, because I think I misread, or I was thinking about a white triangle, which has, you know, x square plus y square is equal to z square, or a square plus b square is equal to c square. But if you're just talking about any triangle, then it, then you just have to triangle inequality you have to worry about, which means a plus b is greater than c. Um, and from that, it probably is just binary search. Um, so I'm trying to think which one of the. So now we have this recurrence or relationship, right? Um, and I'm trying to think about which. You know, you can represent this in a number of different ways. I'm trying to think about which which way of representation is the one that gets us the cleanest way of doing about it. Um, I think another thing to take note, though, is that while I focused on n is less than a thousand, the second thing is that all the numbers are less than a thousand. That means that you can actually maybe do some kind of sweep or scan line type thing, um, just going up as you do, and then. Um, by taking advantage of the frequency map of the length of the sizes and and then maybe playing around with that. Mm. Yeah, so let, let me start by getting the uh, mapping it to frequency table. Uh, let's call it frequency, frequency for flag, flag for frequency. And then, okay. But then now what? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh. There's actually different ways of doing this, and maybe this isn't the I mean, this is good in now. I mean, there's definitely an n square log n way of doing it, but I'm worried that n square log n is a little bit too slow on 1000, at least in Python, maybe in Java or another language, n square log n should be fast enough. Um, yeah. I mean, I think, but in either case, I think that is going to be the same thing. We just have to kind of keep track of a sort of prefix sum or something like that. Um, so we, we do a prefix sum on the frequency table and then it's just about being careful um, with respect to, to like, you know, like um, double counting or not double counting in this case. Um, and yeah, I think that should be good enough because now, for example, Yeah, I think when I said binary search, but if we have a prefix table, I think that should be good enough. 
even though, like I said, you have to be really careful about the R5 ones or whatever. Um, hmm. And I think that, yeah, but I think in, in terms of idea, I think that's okay. I think we just have to figure out the cream implementation. So yeah, so that's, I know that there's a prefix component, but let's figure out how to do it cleanly first, and then we'll, we'll um, yeah, and then we'll kind of play around that idea a little bit. So first, we kind of get all the keys and insert it. So we, we'll just do key this. Let's make sure that this is a list. And then, um, oh, hey, doggy. There's a dog in where I'm staying in San Francisco. But yeah, so now for index in the range of n, let's just say n is 0 to length of keys. So let, let's just say this is a act. Well, this is index. A is equal to frequency of index. And then now for index in one sub uh, index, oops, oops, index 2, say, from index plus 1n, B is equal to frequency of index. And that's kind of change this a little bit right ordering doesn't really matter as long as we use them okay so let's just let's kind of yeah keep just a really good attempt of keeping track so now let's just do the case of a is equal to a um well, what happens if a is equal to a right well as then that means that, oh, oh, sorry, A is equal to B. If A is equal to B, then we're trying to get um, the sum of frequency up to A plus B minus one, say. So this is the prefix sum that we care about. Let's go back and do our prefix sum then. Um, okay. Keeping in mind that this is at most a thousand, so let's just do this times a thousand. Uh, maybe that'll be good enough. A thousand and one, say. Or else we just do maybe max of nums plus one. And then now for the index in. Yeah. Let's just do the prefix uh, sum. The prefix of index is the prefix of minus one plus frequency of index. Um, keeping in mind that, yeah, let's start at well, mm, this isn't quite right. This should be going from one to a thousand and what uh, inclusive or length of prefix anyway. Yeah. Um, and prefix of zero is equal to frequency of zero. Okay. And then now we can just do this, which is we want. <coughs> so, for example, if uh, if a is equal to two, b is equal to two, then we actually want c is going from two to to. to 2 plus 2 minus 1, which is 3. So, so we want to search C as it goes to range of 2 to 3, right? And this is, we don't, even though we can have a smaller number, we don't want a smaller number because that means that we already counted previously. So for double counting purposes, we don't do that. Um, the way that I'm doing it, by, to be honest, needlessly complicated, but, but you know, we'll work on getting it correctly and then we'll figure out afterwards how to um, maybe make changes, but but yeah. So here, so that is just of course equal to. Um, well, in this case, let's separate out the c is equal to a. So if c is equal to a, then we have. Oh. 
then we have no, this is actually wrong. No, 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 this isn't wrong. Index is uh, no, um, A is key subindex. Okay. But now we got frequency. Of A, choose three, right? Because um, we can for for the C is equal to two. We can say this is this choose three, which is um, let us do something like that, and then we also add this by math of choose two. times the prefix of um, a plus a minus 1 minus prefix of a because uh, as we said we're going from um, a plus 1 to a plus a minus 1 so hopefully this is Reasonable. Uh, let's let's actually kind of see do a sanity check right now to see if it makes sense yet, and then we'll see how that goes. Ooh, oh, we got a wrong time. Oh, that's not good. This index our oh, bounds. What's that right? Oh, this may be our bounds. Mm, that's maybe fair. Mm. Oh, this is either this or the map or hmm. yeah, this is such a this is such a mess. Maybe there's an easy way of doing this. I'm doing the dumb bit. Okay. So is this accurate? This is accurate in that this represents if read two, then it goes three and so forth, right? And here it read to two. Don't yeah. I think this is accurate, even though it's a little bit yucky. Um, to be honest, I'm not super confident about the way that I'm going about this, even though it's probably roughly right. Because I think you can actually just be very careful about the prefix as well to um, kind of go over it. But, but yeah, and then now we just have we just do what we were doing earlier, where we start from index plus one, and and this is basically saying um, d is equal to keys of index. So then now count is just we add it to um, the number of ways to do A times the number of ways to do B times, and this is the C part. So, yeah, if A plus B minus 1 is prefix, we do this thing. I'm trying to think that I'm missing a case, which is that if, if I'm definitely missing a case where if um, B can be exactly, um, yeah, B can be exactly, uh, or C can be exactly B, but but I think we have to factor that in. So this is still accurate, but that's factoring C is equal to B. In that case, then we have count to do not that combination of well the number of A's there are times this choose two of them. Okay. I think this is roughly on the same I, same track, though I'm not very confident about it, and I shouldn't because this is just wrong. 
but hmm, why is this wrong? So it goes two and then three. Let's take a quick look. See if I get, get an insight. Uh, okay, two and three is oh, whoops. Okay, that's why. That part is easier, easy to fix. Okay, so that looks good, though to be honest, I have no confidence about this, even though I did catch a mistake. So let's, yeah, let's try something like this. If this is accurate, I am more confident, though I don't know if I'm, you know. Okay, so I am more confident about it. Um, and at the end of the day, if this is the case, then this is just uh, a lot of enum enumeration and case analysis, though I don't know if there's a better way of doing it. So, okay, if this is good, then I'm confident though. And I don't think there's any overflows. So, yeah, okay, so that looks good actually. Let's make sure that there's a, a zero case. Okay, so let's give it a submit. I'm still not confident about it, but it does seem to match a lot of stuff. So, and maybe it's too, ooh, okay. Oh, that's okay. I think I just didn't take, um, take into account zeros at all. Or like I, you know, obviously in a, like a triangle, you should not have a zero length. But I, and I actually even talked about this, but I didn't think that it, it's not a rather triangle. So, I, so obviously this is no good. So let's, ooh. Let's, uh, yeah, if A is equal to zero, we can change it. I think that should be good enough. But I was very sloppy on, that's, I wouldn't say sloppy, I just didn't think about, or I didn't consider it, to be honest. So let's give it a submit. Okay, cool, wow, that actually is, I mean, so this is N square, as you can see, because there's two for loops that goes from N, and everything inside is all of one, roughly speaking. Um, yeah, and even the math combination thing, which is the n choose two, um, it's all of one because we only have at most three anyway. So you can think about it as, because n choose three is what? Um, n times n plus one times n plus two over six or something like that. So that's gonna be like constant coin quote time. Um, I do sort the keys, but you don't actually even need to because can, um, the keys are gonna be just from zero to 1000. I just kind of did it this way because I'm lazy, but you know, you can think about it as sorting. Um, well, the keys can only have a thousand length, so this is going to be constant. Um, even though it does sort, it's a constant or it's um, alpha log alpha, where alpha is the size of the alphabet. But you know, you can also sort it in a non comparison based way. But in any case, uh, everything else though should be straightforward either O of alpha or of n, so this is going to be O of n plus O of alpha uh, or up to here, and then here this is clearly n square algorithm. Um, and I think, even though I wasn't very confident because I was worried that I missed uh, cases and enumerating edge cases, but in general, this was pretty straightforward um, once you are able to list all the possibility and kind of talk through it, right? And I know that I didn't go into detail that much because it's a little bit late, but, but the idea is that, okay, I mean, I think we're breaking through the cases more. This is where we have a triangle, triangles of AAA is here. Um, this is triangles of AA and then you know, A plus one all the way to, to A plus A minus one um, because yeah, if this is one length, one side is A, one side is A, and then this is, the third could be any of these edges, and we just do the count of, you know, um, this is the A, two sides being A's, and then this is the count of all the way, you know, um, uh, uh, all the edges that goes all the way there, um, of length A plus one, of length A plus two, dot, 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 and you know, this is a prefix sum type thing. 
Um, and here, I mean, it is the same except for that it just looks at the last element. And then here is the same idea where you have triangles of A, B, and then uh, it starts with B plus 1 because this assumes that B is greater than A, and then all the way to A plus B minus 1. So that's basically that. And then here is triangles of A, B, B. And how many ways are there to find put A, and how many ways are there to do B. And that's basically the idea that um, comes into play here. Um, yeah, uh, that's what I have for this one. It's a little bit tricky, but to be honest, I feel like most people should be able to get this if they have the idea of grinding it out and enumerate all the, all the different variations of triangles. And yeah, I mean, I don't think, I, I think most of this is elementary math, but it is a little bit awkward. It's a little bit weird. It, it's a little bit, um, you have to be confident in yourself as well. And kind of put all of these things together. I thought there would be an easier way, so I'm going to take a look at the solution maybe. But but that's basically how the way I would do it. Let's take a quick look at the solution, I suppose, just to see if there's maybe even a more basic one that I missed. Uh, I think there's some like scan line uh, type thing here. The proof force, obviously, we talked about the binary search a little bit. Um, it's the same idea in that you you basically you have A and B, and then you binary search for the possible Cs. Uh, linear scan, okay, so linear scan is essentially similar to, I mean, mm, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I was thinking about doing it essentially this way, but I thought that this would be too slow, but, well, like, a little bit awkward with respect to implementation, but, uh, but yeah, but you can think about it as, um, the same idea in that I just compressed it and then um, being, with, with it being compressed, I am able to do these much quicker. Um, and also this is similar to the binary search in that instead of doing a binary search where, you know, for for this third component, which is the C, we binary search the beginning and the end to get the count. So that's how you do a binary search. But the way that we did it instead is that we compressed it to a prefix sum so that instead of um, getting this in log n time, you get it in all of one time, which allows to have n squared. Anyway, mm, I think that's all I have for this one. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Hope y'all have a great Thursday. Have a great rest of the week. I'll see you later. Stay cool, stay calm, to good mental health. And I will see you later. Bye-bye.